Good morrow, good morrow, good people of YouTube, and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't guessed from the bonnet wearing, we're going to be making the Regency dress that I was talking about in the last video that I basically made those days for. So the Regency gown that I am going to try and recreate is I'm actually trying to recreate a 1815 look so kind of more later Regency and to make this look I'm going off of these fashion plates here but mostly I'm also really modeling off of this particular dress that sits in a museum in Stockholm Sweden I in truth I take elements kind of from all three just to kind of get me to where my final dress was but it does seem that around that time period the blue and white striped fabric was very very popular and since it's still unfortunately rather warm for September I decided to go with a very lightweight cotton like a summer cotton and I had this gorgeous light blue and white striped fabric in my stash so that's what I'm using for this video and because I wasn't really happy with the pattern that I did own, I mostly draft the bodice section and alter the sleeves from the pattern to help me get the look I was really going for. Um, basically, with the museum one, I'm going to be trying to replicate the bodice from that one. I thought it was very interesting the way they used the stripes in the bodice. And then one of the fashion plates, I'm kind of taking the idea of the sleeve design, and then another fashion plate, I'm taking the idea of the trim at the bottom of the dress, which I kind of wish I had had more lace to get the trim I wanted, but that's something we can always add on to later. So as always, let's just go ahead and jump on in. But before I get started, I'd just like to say, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you can see more of my videos in the future. So without further ado, let's go make a Regency dress. So to draft the bodice, I'm working on the front piece first and I took two pieces of scrap fabric to emulate the seam that I'd have running up the front. And I just pin that to myself and kind of figure out how big it needs to be. Now this dress has no darts. This is why this was a very important step because I had to be careful where I made the the seams basically the different bodice pieces so that I wouldn't have to have darts as you can see I have an orange ribbon on that's at the end of my stays this helps me regulate how long I want my whole bodice to be and the way I was kind of figuring it out is I knew I had to have it covering up my shift so basically that's where my second side piece had to begin because the second side piece has the arm strap that goes up and that need, is very important because that needs to cover everything. And here is me beginning on my side panel. It's not long enough as you'll see later I have to measure that out and make a new piece but right now I was just concerned about making the connection to the front bodice section and then getting that strap section just right. This is very fiddly work, but I think in the end it's it's definitely worth it because this is like probably the hardest part of the whole project. And here you can see I'm measuring out how much I need to extend my side piece to get it to go all the way to the back. I think it was about like six or seven inches. I'm not can't 100 percent remember. And here's the result. Then I just cut in my arm side. All right, as you guys saw, I went ahead and put on, you know, my shift and my stays earlier to kind of make these front two pieces. But now we are going to be uh, further, you know, tidying it up and everything. So I'm gonna go grab my reference image from the actual garment in the museum to help me define like if this is too high, too low, whatever. And of course, the very important part is we've gotta do the back. So this is of course my front and my side. Um, also, I hate this stand. It's so stiff. But yeah, uh, 
So that's pretty much what this step is, is I'm gonna go ahead and fix the front and side pieces first. So we're gonna further define them and get the right shape going and then we'll work on the back. Now that I fine tuned the front side and the straps, and of course, as you saw, I was cutting away some of the um, armpit there, it's now time for the, the scary part, which is the back. Now this one, as I think I mentioned earlier, this is that classic, what got very popular after 1807, um, where it laces up at the top and the bottom. But this one, this dress is unusual because while it does have the diamond back pattern, it's it's rather big compared to what we're normally used to seeing in the early Regency period. I'm thinking this is because this dress is 1815. So essentially it's the diamond pieces started getting bigger. So I've kind of made a rough idea of the shape. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of play around with it to get what we need. And I can already tell that I miscalculated how high the back needs to be. I actually have it, well maybe not, maybe it's just my side piece is still too long. That's actually probably what it is. Actually, I'm really impressed with how well I've managed to make this. Um, <laughs> I've got this Ron here, and I've got this curve Ron. I can see that I'm gonna have to cut this and kind of reshape it, but that's okay because I already have it too long there. You know, this is the whole, this is the part we need to do, so. Uh, again, I am using my reference image, um, but also we have to just be realistic about like, oh, my armhole is here. <laughs> so, you know, just, this almost doesn't even, <laughs> Like it definitely still has the classic diamond shaped look and I'm thinking I do need to take this in more, but one step at a time. And yes, please, if you are doing like me and you have your shift on here because you want to make sure it's covering up your shift, which is why we have the shift on here because I know this is a bit of a higher back than most Regency shifts would have been. And I'm gonna go ahead and just chop this right off and actually kind of angle it like this. So I'm going to tack this piece on. <laughs> and then I will cut this into more of a curve and then of course this would get cut there so I'm cutting this cutting that cutting this so that our neckline is more even another thing I have to keep in mind is this will have to get long, um, this will have to be a bit longer because it is lace up and I can see that it gathers when it gets tied. So I probably need to add about an inch onto the top, but I just wanna get this general shape. So I actually want this to come out more like that. So I want it to meet the side. And now we're getting more of that diamond look. So I think that was the problem. I had this piece too, um, too much over into the waist because this actually has to meet up. So I'm gonna work a little more on this and uh, yeah.
Now that my corrections have been made to my back piece, I'm just applying that to a new piece of fabric for the template. These are my two front pieces. So I actually have the center fronts pinned just because I was checking it on the dress form. And this is where the fancy part comes in on the dress. Now on the dress we're recreating or attempting to recreate, they actually have this very unusual pleating on the front panels. And the way they've done the pleating too has the lines actually going in a horizontal way, contradictory to the rest of the dress which I think is interesting. It gives it a very nice flair. So what we need to do is now cut big pieces of square, uh, square pieces of our striped fabric with our horizontal lines going at an angle. So now we're gonna do that and then we'll pleat them on to these pieces. And I wanna make sure that I'm keeping my lines continuing when I pleat. So see how all my stripes are still lining up? This was a very long process that took me a while to kind of wrap my head around, so. Don't feel bad if it takes you a bit of time too. <laughs> and here's where I'm basting all of my pleats into place. Now that we have our lining cut, we need to talk about our back pieces. Before we do anything, once it's cut and pressed, we are going to be making our channels on our lining pieces because this will mean that it'll be invisible once we sew everything up together and I can go ahead and basically get the lacings in before attaching all the lining pieces together. And yes, I am using bias tape again. Yay! So we need two channels. We, we need one at the bottom, but I don't want it exactly at the bottom. I want it about a half an inch up. So I need one here, a half an inch from the bottom. And then I want one that curves up basically a half an inch from the top and follows all the way up to the neckline. So I've got that one down here. Let me get some clippies. Hold that in place. Oh, my hands are very stiff. <laughs> Some of the reason I don't do a lot of hand sewing is literally I just too stiff jointed. <laughs> okay, and now I need to do my top, so I think I'll grab a clip, put it there, and just kind of figure out how long it would need to be. The reason I'm doing this though so early is because I really don't want any stitch lines showing through to the back. So once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and sew all the sides of the channels and this is what it'll look like right here. Very nice and prettily, pretty, <laughs> prettily? I don't know what word that is, but yes. <laughs> So it's very nice and pretty, and as you can see, I've just stitched along the sides, leaving both ends open so that we can feed our ribbon through that will close up the whole dress, basically. So I'm going to go ahead and sew on the other channels on the other side, and we can put our ribbon in. So I've cut out four pieces of ribbon at about 22 inches. This gives me plenty of room uh, to shrink them down in size if I want. Always better to be longer than short. So. I'm just going to put it on the safety pin and feed them through. I've gone with a blue that generally matches my the blue stripes on the dress. This is a slightly big, almost too big. There we go. 
it'll fit but yes <laughs> just be a slight struggle essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm feeding it through the side that I know I'm gonna sew in which is my inside if that makes sense So I'm just gonna pull it through until I'm right at the edge, like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and clip that to hold it in place, undo my safety pin, and we're gonna go ahead and do this with each one. Now, admittedly, I just realized I've made a slight mistake, <laughs> which is I was not supposed to bring these channels all the way to the end because I need a smooth finish on here. So I'm gonna have to, uh, once I'm done with this, I'm actually gonna have to go ahead and seam rip a little bit backwards. So just telling you guys that right now, I have made a boo-boo. <laughs> After you go ahead and sew all of your ribbon so it's locked in place, then it's just time to finish up the rest of the lining as normal, just sewing everything together. All right, so the lining is done. It's a little looser than I was hoping, but I think when maybe I attach the outer layer to the lining that will kind of tighten it up a bit. We'll have to see. But now we're on to the next step, which is the sewing up the main part. And I'm a little grumpy because I worked so hard trying to line this up just to realize while I got my white and blue lines lined up, I did not get my pleats uh, lined up. So that was, uh, that was genius on my part, but it's, there's just not enough time to go back and fix it. <laughs> Uh, anywho, so I have bought some white cording because on the original there is cording and um, so there's cording here in the very front seam. There's actually two layers of cording so I'm going to go ahead and cut two pieces of cording like this. Uh, in the original dress it is in fact um, the, the same. It's made of the the fabric but I, I just I don't have the time <laughs> unfortunately to do that with and make my own cording because that's like a whole nother ballpark so we're just gonna go ahead and use white uh, pre-bought uh, cording oh, is that what it's called is that the piping I'm sorry it's actually piping I don't brain not in functioning mode so we'll start with this seam this front one I recommend that you use the zipper foot to sew your cording in there's cording on pretty much every seam in the bodice so there's two in the middle one on the side front and then of course the side back seam as well once you get all this cording sewn in, it's just on to sewing the lining to the fashion fabric side. And I just match up all of my seams. Of course, I put right sides together. And I go along the whole top and then the back edge, which is why I had to pick out the seams for the ribbons. This is the one you just have to be careful not to sew your ribbon in. And as you can see, I had to trim one of the sides is a little too long and that was just going to make it a bit harder to do and yeah basically you just want to keep your bottom of your bodice open and you'll flip it right side out after you sew it and then you just got to press everything to make it look nice and polished and that's the bodice done So here we are. <laughs> um, 
It looks really awesome, except for the stupid front pleating. I am so intensely mad at myself right now about that. You know, I was getting so preoccupied about like, oh, look, I've got my stripes lined up. Oh, except that was the part that I probably could have fudged a little bit because of the cording. No, I totally got distracted by that. I didn't even think about that pleating. Oh, but that's okay. You know, these are things we can fix later. Like I can always put another slab of pleating on top or something, but <sighs> for now it's gonna be okay. And that's that. So essentially, uh, let's take a look at the back. Uh, the only part I have not shown is I did baste my armholes and my bottom just to help me through the rest. But yes, yeah, so let's take a look at the back. If this dress form will turn. It's good, it's covering up my shift at the top, which was a big concern for me. It's got a neat edge and it's drawstringing and I think we solved the problem that was a little on the big side. So no, it's, it's just good, it's good. It looks So, for the sleeves, I really wanted to go with something a little on the shorter side. I had thought about doing like a princessy puff sleeve and that was it, similar to one of the fashion plates I was really basing this look off of. But I think I'm really tired and running out of time and I think I'm just gonna use this pattern to help me. And this is Simplicity 8941 and it's got like the quarter sleeve. So I don't know, well, I'll, I'll think about it. Maybe I can reduce it. The sleeve pattern already looks a bit weird in this design, so I'm not 100% sure if it's gonna go with my dress, but I hope it does because I hate drafting sleeves from scratch. Just really hate it. Um, so I'm gonna try that. Uh, I may even end up using the skirt pattern from this to finish the dress just because why make my life difficult, right? <laughs> and, you know, clock's a tick in here, people. Basically, I have today to finish this dress. <laughs> oh, who are we kidding, guys? I, I never do anything easy. So, um, yeah, I want puff sleeves. I kind of came to this conclusion because I also realized that my yarn holes are literally an inch bigger than what theirs were. Ironically, the length for my puff sleeves is basically the little lines they put on to lengthen or shorten your sleeves. So um, that's kind of cool. I'm just going to use that as my base. I need to add an inch at least onto here, but to get the puffiness, I might actually add a, a, a bit more length here too, make it more sh so. Yeah, no, I think that would be right. Yeah, if we add just like a whole inch, so basically half an inch on either side, that should fit better. I may, no, hmm, I am very undecisive. We're gonna add an inch onto either side. That's what we're gonna do. Cause then I can, that makes it so I have to gather this at the top. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm getting there. I'm getting there, you guys, I, I am. And here I am tediously cutting out my skirt panels. There's a front one that's cut on the fold, a back one's cut on the fold, and then the sides. All right, so I've gotten all the skirt panels put together. We got our front, our sides, and our solid back. I do believe a comment was made that I was not going to be altering the skirt pattern at all. This was a lie. Um, Cause you know, I, I just like keeping you guys on your toes on this channel, you know. Uh, so this is my center front. The This is essentially the piece that I altered. I thought it was way too much skirt cause looking at the pattern, they have it as a full gathered skirt cause the pattern is more based off of a, what is called a round gown, not specifically the, um, 1850 gap 
1815 gown. In other words, it's more, the pattern's more early Regency, while we're going with more late Regency. So what I did is I cut it down, I only have about 17 inches for the front panel, because I don't want the whole piece gathered. Because if you look at later Regency gowns, they do not have a gathering in the front. So what I want to do is, so from the center to my side is about 14 inches. Oh, I guess I cut it down to 28. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm sorry. The front piece was cut down to 28 uh, inches. 26 inches. This is not my middle is what my problem is. Okay. So it's 13 from center front to the first side. I'm going to go over to my dress form just see where that is. I'm really quick on the dress. Yeah, so... What I'm going to do is basically five inches in from my side seam on the front. I'm going to mark that and that's where I'm going to start my gatherings. And I'm only going to gather the sides because I actually want the back to be pleated. I've seen that on a lot of late Regency dresses where the sides will be gathered and then you get to the back and it actually has those really large pleats as seen in this image here. <laughs> I just think that's a little nicer looking. So that's where we're at. We're going to just start gathering up the sides. Um, yes. <laughs> so I'm going to gather the two sides up and then uh, I guess we'll start attaching it to the bodice. Yay! So we are actually looking at the back of our bodice and to make it so the skirt can attach because the skirt's a solid piece, I've just slightly overlapped the bottom edge here and tacked it in place. So now we can go ahead and attach the skirt, which FYI, I got a little confused, ended up gathering the whole side and back. So whoops, but I still think we could pleat it a bit in the back to get that nice look. Uh, I just got confused and I'm tired, so yeah. All right, it's actually starting to look like a dress. So it is back there in a big pile of mess. But I did trim down the hem of it because it was a little long because I have to keep in mind that with the Regency style you wear flats usually. And um, I wanted to also trim it down because I want to have, like in that one fashion plate I was showing, I want to have actually like a lace trim at the bottom. So it's been cut down, hemmed, and we're now on to the funnest part of any dress in my opinion, which is the trim. So let's talk about it. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about the trim and change views because honestly, you're not going to see it very well from this angle, so... Boop, 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 boop. What time is it? It's trim time! Yay! So this lovely lady is pretty much the major trim I'm going to be using. It's gorgeous. I got it for an awesome steal of a deal, which makes it even nicer in my opinion. I'd like to do the whole hem with this trim. I'm just doing so much rhyming right now. So, isn't that pretty? It's really nice and pretty. I don't think it'll catch too easily. Um, so I'd like to do the whole hem, and I'm actually hoping I'll have enough left over, which I really should. I think there's like almost seven yards of it, to also do the sleeve uh, as well, and maybe even go around the whole neckline. That I'm a little iffy about having enough of. But this is the first trim that we'll do. The second is just very basic, um, kind of like insertion, insertion, <laughs> insertion lace um, that's just in a nice format like this. It's a matching white with very similar details. And this will just be on the skirt base. And um, as you can see, a lot of times they have just like 
a, 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 flu a floofy lace at the bottom and then they'd have these in, like straight line laces or ribbon kind of going up above. I really have no way of properly describing that. So I have a couple rolls of that and we'll see how far I guess it takes me because it's only four yards so I may only get one one line but oh, that's all right so let's go and do the hem of the skirt first with this and see how far we get Thank you. 